So as you guys may have heard, there was an armed incursion into Venezuela. You had a group of private mercenaries from a company called Silver Corps. They were trying to oust Maduro. So this was essentially a failed coup, and it failed quite miserably. All right, so these guys, eight of them were killed, and the rest of them were caught by a bunch of fishermen. Yeah. So let me show you some of the footage here. At least eight terrorists have been captured by Venezuelan special forces in an attempt to enter Venezuela to carry out terrorist attacks and assassinations. Two U.S. terrorists belonging to the Silver Corps mercenary firm have been identified. President Nicolas Maduro confirmed the capture of U.S. terrorists belonging to Silver Corps mercenary firm. Let's take a look. El pasaporte de Denman Luke Alexander. Nacido el 22 de enero del año 1986 en Texas. Aquí está el pasaporte. Aquí están sus tarjetas. Driver license. Veterano de guerra. Aquí está su carné como parte de Silver Corp. <laughs> Man, honestly. Watching him read out their names and embarrass the U.S. on live TV, on national TV. Amazing. At least eight other U.S. terrorists belonging to Silver Corps have also been killed by Venezuelan special forces. With two mercenaries captured, one detained is a U.S. DEA agent. So they seized a bunch of trucks, rifles, speedboats, satellite phones, ammunition. And this is when the eight U.S. terrorists were captured by Venezuelan authorities. The captured terrorists, Denman and Barry, are U.S. military veterans from Texas, contracted with Silver Corps, and are associates of Florida-based ex-Green Beret Jordan Goudreau, linked to J.J. Rendon and Juan Guaido. So for context, this J.J. Rendon is a U.S. protected international criminal who has been involved in fraud and election rigging across Latin America. And Jordan Goudreau is an ex-Green Beret who leads Silver Corps mercenary firm. He's also a right-wing Trump supporter, Goudreau coordinated the Venezuela terrorist plot with the U.S.-backed Juan Guaido, who hired him but backed out at the last minute. Here is the terrorist leader, Jordan Goudreau of Silver Corps, running private security for U.S. President Trump at one of his infamous rallies. At least one of the captured U.S. terrorists is confirmed to have also participated as Trump's private security previously. One of the captured terrorists told Venezuelan authorities that they were coordinating and taking orders from U.S. President Trump's personal security chief, Jordan Goudreau. And they claim to have an official contract signed by Juan Guaido, hiring Silver Corps to commit terrorist acts and assassinations in Venezuela. The contract is signed by Juan Guaido, J.J. Rendon, and Sergio Vergara. Now, of course, Trump denied it. I just got information, nothing to do with our government, but I just got information on that. So, we'll, well, we'll find out. We just heard about it. Uh, but whatever it is, we'll let you know. But it has nothing to do with our government. So, essentially, this uh, Juan Guaido, who is the fake president of Venezuela, <laughs> I mean, you have 60 plus countries who recognize him as the president, even though he's literally not running the country. So, he signed this contract, and they basically paid this mercenary group $200 million to go in and, and assassinate Maduro, to do a coup, effectively. And it failed miserably. So, half of them got killed, and the other half got captured. And, I mean, this is a piss-poor attempt at a coup, if I've ever seen one. <laughs> this is like a great value version of Bay of Pigs, right? It's the Dollar Tree version. Horrendous. And of course, Donald Trump is, is acting like he has no idea and he's never heard about this. Yeah, that's, that's, that's nonsense. Okay. So on top of that, actually, Mike Pompeo, he said something interesting last week. Take a look. In Venezuela, I'm pleased to report that the multilateral effort to restore democracy is continuing to build momentum. I've asked my team to update our plans to reopen the U.S. Embassy in Caracas so that we are ready to go as soon as Maduro steps aside. I am confident that we will raise that flag again 
in Caracas. The multilateral effort to restore democracy. That's CIA lingo for a coup. That's what that means. Okay, so <laughs> this was last week, and he knew it was coming. Make no mistake, huh? these guys would have never made a move without the United States government okaying this. The U.S. government is not stupid. They knew perfectly well what was going on, especially since they've been propping up this Juan Guaido. They're the ones propping him up and making sure that all the other countries and their allies fall in line and recognize him, even though he's not the leader of Venezuela. So you all know they want to get into Venezuela. They want to get rid of Maduro because he's a socialist, because he doesn't want to play ball. He's an anti-imperialist, doesn't recognize Israel. And of course, you guessed it, Venezuela is sitting on top of enormous, enormous reserves of oil, the largest in the world, as a matter of fact. So naturally, the United States and their multinational corporations, their oil companies, want a piece of that pie. And you don't need to take my word for it, just listen to John Bolton saying it for you. We're looking at the oil assets, that's the single most uh, important income stream to the government of Venezuela. We're looking at what to do to that. We want everybody to know we're, we're looking at all this very seriously. We don't want any American businesses or investors caught by surprise. They can see what President Trump did yesterday. We're following through on it. Uh, so if you think of a company like Sitco, which is owned by Pedavesa, which is the state-run oil company there in Venezuela, we have a lot of those Sitco assets right here in the U.S. Is that something, for example, sir, that you're looking at? Yeah, well, we're in conversation with major American companies now that are either in Venezuela or in the case of Citgo here in the United States. Uh, I think we're trying to get to the same end result here. You know, uh, Venezuela is one of the three countries I call the Troika of Tyranny. It'll make a big difference to the United States economically if we could have American oil companies really invest in and, and produce the oil uh, capabilities in uh, Venezuela. It'd be good for the people of Venezuela. It'd be good for the people of the United States. We both have a lot at stake here, making this come out the right way. So as we've previously covered, the United States, they also sent their navy to encircle Venezuela, both from the Pacific and the Caribbean, to intimidate Maduro. And of course, with this failed coup, by contracting a private firm to do it, they can always claim plausible deniability, right? If it fails, like it just did, they can say, oh, well, we have nothing to do with that. We have no idea. Just like when, when Blackwater and other civilian contractors commit war crimes and, and torture people and execute them, they're not court-martialed, and the United States doesn't have to go through war crimes procedures, right? Because they're just civilian contractors. Which is not an excuse. They're still war crimes. And, and this is absolutely insane. I mean, who do these people think they are? Venezuela is a sovereign nation. You don't have the right to just carry out armed incursions into another country and assassinate people. Have you gone mad? Can you imagine if Venezuela had done that to the United States? They would be nuking Venezuela as we speak. So what is this imperialist to double standard? You don't have to like Maduro, but you should respect and you must respect the sovereignty and the borders of nations. It's not up to you to decide who is the leader of another nation. It's not up to you to send in armed groups and terrorists to carry out coups. This is an act of war. But of course, the United States think that they are the world police and that they have the moral authority to go around telling other countries how to run themselves, including Venezuela, including Iran, including Syria, etc., etc. Well, I say that's fucking bullshit. So these amateurs were captured, and uh, rightfully so, now Maduro is asking for Goudreau, the guy who runs this private mercenary silver group, to be extradited. He wants him extradited to Venezuela to face charges. Tras de esto está Donald Trump, May Pompeo directamente. Es un contrato ordenado por el Departamento de Estado en condiciones de operación encubierta contra Venezuela. Estos estadounidenses han encontrado otra Venezuela que no esperaban de fortaleza institucional con un pueblo que los sorprendió con una fuerza armada cohesionada con fuerzas policiales y de inteligencia sólida. Yo creo que cabe a derecho la solicitud de extradición de acuerdo al acuerdo de extradición entre Estados Unidos y Venezuela del señor Jordan Grodot, que ha confesado sus delitos contra la legalidad y la paz y soberanía de Venezuela. 
as for who bankrolled it, we're, we're not prepared to share any more information about what, what we know took place. We'll, uh, we'll unpack that at appropriate time. We'll share that information that makes good sense. The Venezuelan government wants this Goudreau extradited so he can face charges. And of course, this is obviously what should happen. I mean, the guy is literally a terrorist. You're running armed groups into another country to assassinate people. I mean, have you, have you gone fucking nuts? So I don't know if anything is going to come of that. Goudreau was actually running private security for Trump at one point. So he definitely has connections to the administration. And he definitely has connections to Juan Guaido. So make no mistake, the United States and this, uh, this fake puppet government that they have going on with Guaido, they had their hand in this. For sure, 100%. This wouldn't have happened without them okaying it. Make no mistake. Venezuela's chief prosecutor has ordered the arrest of a former Green Beret and two opposition figures living in the United States for their purported role in a botched operation aimed at removing Nicolas Maduro from power. Tariq William Saab said Venezuela will seek the capture of Jordan Goudreau, a military veteran who has claimed responsibility for the attack, as well as Juan José Rendon and Sergio Vergara, two U.S.-based advisors to the opposition leader Juan Guaido. U.S. law enforcement officials are investigating Goudreau, though it remains unclear if he will be charged. President Trump does not recognize Maduro's government, making it highly unlikely that his administration would accept any extradition request. Venezuelan authorities have been insisting that Trump's government was behind the plot, with Saab noting on Friday that the U.S. had previously offered a $15 million bounty for Maduro's arrest, which he said opened the door for such attacks. That gives a green light for an incursion into our territory, he said. In video statements aired on Venezuela state television, Denman and Barry said they had been hired by Goudreau to train rebel troops in Colombia and target Maduro. Goudreau said they were part of his operation. So, I mean, this is a given. Uh, the United States always demand that such and such be extradited so they can face charges. Like Julian Assange, for example, who has done absolutely nothing wrong and has never even been in America. They are trying to extradite him so they can imprison him for who knows how many centuries. He's a political prisoner. They're trying to make an example out of him because they hate journalists and anyone who exposes imperialism. And of course, the United States has always tried to extradite drug traffickers from Latin American countries. So it's only normal that, you know, Venezuela would want Goudreau and whoever else was involved in this terrorist incursion to be extradited so they can face charges. Of course. And as you can see, once again, the imperialism at play, right? The United States going around like they're the world police, thinking they can just walk into other countries like it's their backyard and, and kill people and overthrow governments and install puppet governments so they can steal and plunder their natural resources, right? So what you're seeing in Venezuela, you've been seeing in Syria, we've been seeing in the Middle East, in Iran, in Iraq, in Libya, they don't stop, right? They don't stop. You can't be independent. You can't be outside of their international banking system. You can't be independent from their multinational corporations. No. By hook or by crook, they want to come in, install a puppet government, and take over your resources. And Latin America knows this very well, right? If you know your Cold War history, <laughs> this is no surprise to you whatsoever.